As the word was preached that Jesus was coming soon, very soon, the movement gained traction and momentum. Whilst there were doubters and scoffers, the numbers of those waiting for Jesus' return swelled. The movement was at its strongest in the northeast of the United States of America, though it was by no means limited to just being an American phenomenon. Before the days of email and internet communications, God's Spirit was moving on different people around the world as they studied His Word and came to similar conclusions. In England, a preacher named Edward Irving proclaimed the soon return of Jesus. In Germany, Johann Bengel. In South America, Manuel de la Cunza. This was a worldwide revival, fulfilling the text in Daniel 12 verse 4 that says at the time of the end, men would run to and fro and knowledge would be increased. Knowledge of the Bible, but in particular, knowledge of the books of Daniel and Revelation. The believers initially expected Jesus to return in the spring of 1844, and when he did not, this produced some disappointment, but they were greatly encouraged when Samuel Snow's studies revealed the prophecy pointed towards October the 22nd. This brought great revival amongst the believers as they wanted to put their wrongs right and be ready to meet Jesus when he comes. They wanted their lives to show evidence of their faith. Some sold their houses, others closed their businesses, some farmers left their crops in their fields, and many others got baptized. Charles Fitch was a minister who baptized many people in the autumn of 1844. And unfortunately, on one occasion, because there were so many people to baptize and he spent so long in the chilly New England waters, he caught pneumonia. He died on October the 14th, but due to the faith that he and his family shared in the soon return of Jesus, they believed they would see him in just a few weeks. His obituary would spell this out. The believers in the locality of William Miller's farm gathered on his property to wait for Jesus' return and stood here on this rock, today known as Ascension Rock. They believed they would ascend to heaven. When Jesus did not come, they suffered a bitter disappointment and their hopes were dashed. They had hung their lives on the belief that Jesus was coming soon and now he hadn't. Was their faith in vain? Was it presumption? Could they recover from the embarrassment, ridicule, and shame they would face? Henry Emmons later said, I waited all Tuesday, and dear Jesus did not come. I waited all the forenoon of Wednesday, but after 12 o'clock, I began to feel faint. My natural strength was leaving me very fast, and I lay prostrate for two days without any pain sick with disappointment. Hiram Edson later commented, our fondest hopes and expectations were blasted and such a spirit of weeping came over us as I have never experienced before. It seemed that the loss of all earthly friends could have been no comparison. We wept and wept till the day dawned. The believers would now be challenged to live by faith to hang on to God and to trust His promises when they didn't know how, to have faith in the moments of darkness and to trust when it doesn't seem to make sense. This would be their test and it's a test that comes our way as well. Let us remember when it does that His eye is on the sparrow and He watches over us in the good times as well as in the tough times.